Hi, I'm Alan Bresnik, Cable Video Practice Leader for Light Reading. I'm here in Denver at our Cable Next Gen Technologies and Strategy Show, talking to Ben Watkins, creator and writer of series on USA Network and Amazon Prime. That's right. Ben, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Thank you. So what's the difference between writing, creating a show for a linear broadcast or cable platform and for OTT like Amazon? Uh, you know, I think it's... For me right now, two differences, mm -hmm. uh, two big differences that I would point out. One is, you know, when you're doing a show on broadcast, it's going to air once a week. Right. Uh, and a lot of times you're writing that show sort of concurrent with production. So, you know, there's some pressure that comes with that because you don't have the scripts all the time. You're, you're, get, you're always under the gun to get that script in time to produce it. Right. But one of the advantages that comes with doing a broadcast show or traditional is that you can sort of get feedback real time. You can figure out if storylines are working and then you can adjust as you go. Or you can figure out if there's some like great cast chemistry that you didn't anticipate. All of a sudden these two characters are really hitting it off right. and you can build on that and incorporate it into your storyline. So you can adjust things as you go. Yeah. When you're doing over the top, you're usually going to have all the shows in the can. Right. Right. So you're not going to get any audience feedback. You'll be able to do a little bit of watching production and say, hey, you know what, I think this is flatter than we expected or this chemistry, but you won't know if the audience responds the same way. Right. And so while you get the advantage of having more prep time and maybe more time to delve into the stories and, right. and create layered stories, you have the disadvantage of not being able to use that feedback. So that's the, the one big difference. And then the second one... So you got to get it right the first time. That's right. That's okay. right. And then the second one is going to be how is it delivered. As I mentioned, if you're going broadcast, it's going to be delivered once a week. And what you get with that, you do a great episode... Um, but you also get a week's worth of promotion, right. a week's worth of building anticipation for the next episode. If you're doing over the top, chances are they're going to be binging, they're going to be streaming, and the question of whether or not they come back to your show, whether or not they go on to the next episode, is usually going to be based on what they've just seen. And a lot of times that means building in cliffhangers or story turns, twists towards the end of the episode that really motivate people to tune in and keep on going. Okay, got it. So... Getting into more of the technology of things, Hand of God, the series that you're doing in Amazon now, first season was just in film, but the second right. season you did in 4K. That's right. So what, what was that like? What were your concerns going in, and how did that work out? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I had a couple of concerns. Not being a, a really um, versed or an expert on the technology part mm -hmm. of it, my real thing is what is it going to look like? What's the quality? Sure. Um, if, are we just trying to service technology, or are we trying to get the best quality? Mm -hmm. And a good example of that is season one. You know, we're, we're in a situation where Amazon had made a statement publicly that they were going to shoot and deliver everything in 4K. Right. And then they got a little bit of pushback from our show started it because we didn't feel like there was a camera that was really going to get us the quality uh, that at the 4K level. So right. we did not do, uh, we did not want to shoot in 4K. And the compromise with Amazon was, we'll allow you to shoot it on film and then deliver in 4K. Mm -hmm. And so we really felt like that really helped our show. But then when we moved into season two, technology was moving quickly, and we got into a situation where uh, one of the cameras we wanted to use, we felt like really could pull it off. And so uh, our, our, my co-executive producer, uh, Mark Forster, who's a you know, film director, um, and really, in, in really engaged and invested in what is the quality going to be. Felt that with the with the camera we were going to use in season two, we could go to digital and still get the quality we wanted. So we shot it and delivered in 4K. And I think that if you get to watch it in 4K, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, not everyone is right now, but I think you know we're getting to that point, and so it's it's really amazing. Okay. So now that you've done 4K, next thing, augmented reality, virtual reality. Yes, virtual reality, um, augmented reality. I really feel like that one has some legs. I mean, a lot of times you hear about some of these enhanced components to traditional storytelling and traditional filmmaking, and some of them really feel gimmicky. You know, if you ask me to go watch a movie, you know, take my kids to a movie and it, it's offered in 3D and in traditional, I'll go to the traditional version. Right. Uh, but virtual reality, having, you know, experienced some of that, I feel like is going to have legs. And because so many things are being created at that level digitally mm -hmm. um, and te technologically, it will be something that could be incorporated into traditional storytelling. So, you know, we're developing a show right now with Hulu where we're already thinking about how can we have a virtual reality component. So we're not going to talk about shooting an entire show and doing it in virtual reality. Right. But we are going to say, let's do, for example, a cold open where as soon as you tune in, the story starts 
and we'll do like a two to three minute sequence before you get to the main titles. Mm -hmm. And let's shoot that traditionally, but also have, be able to do it with virtual reality. So how soon will we see that? Um, well, you know, that show is actually in development right now. Uh, it's sort of fast tracked. We've got, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, Foxy Brown's a, you know, classic. It's an iconic title, That's and so show. everyone's yeah. excited to do right. it. We have a star in Megan Good, uh -huh. who already is ready to be the new Foxy Brown. So everybody's very excited about this show. Uh -huh. um, and so, but the earliest we could choose probably July, and which means we'd probably be delivering, you know, a good six months after. Okay. What other TV projects do you have in the works? I got a couple, a couple of things, a couple of exciting things. One is a, a con show. Uh, with uh, at USA USA Network, so right. I'm kind of going back to my old stomping grounds, right. and we have a, a show that's called Connoisseur, and it's ba it's inspired by a true story, and then we sort of built out from here. And there was a true story about a guy who went into the rare rare wine world and conned all these billionaires and and rich people out of a hundred million dollars worth by selling counterfeit wine in the auctions. So it's kind of double meaning in the yeah, title. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that was what that was that you caught that. Yeah. Um, so that show is um, based on it's got John Cho attached to Star. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to be producing it. Uh, there's a great young writer named Gary Lundy who brought me the idea and we have been working that out and we we're really excited about that. USA Network's really excited about it. Okay. Well, looking forward to seeing that come out. Yeah, All me right. too. Thank ben, you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Sure. Great to see you.